Hi, everyone. Today, I'm with one of my clients, Liesl Teversham, and she's going to be sharing with you some of the lessons she's learned in building her business and also how she works with clients. And uh, I think you'll benefit from this. So, Liesl, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, George. It's such a pleasure to be with you today. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. So let me read your bio so everyone can have a context of what you do, and then we'll get into some of your business lessons. Um, so Liesl helps introverts build confidence. So if any of you can relate to that, um, when you're building your business and you're feeling like you're lacking, you're, you're fearful, anxious, or lacking confidence, if you're an introvert, this is perfect for you. Uh, Liesl helps people work through the blocks and fears that stop them and to find and embrace their true authentic strengths. Some of her favorite tools are EFT, emotional freedom technique. Some of you have heard of it as tapping uh, and also the Gallup Strengths Finder, which is probably the most well-known, respected um, sort of measure of one's character strengths, um, you know, that, that are effective in work and in relationships, et cetera. Used together, they provide a solid foundation for any introvert who wants to make a difference in the world in their unique and quiet way. So I love that bio. Thanks, Liesl. Thanks. Um, so you've learned a lot in, in building your business over the last few years. And uh, one of the things that we were talking about uh, that you might want to share is reframing marketing. And I think that's especially useful for what's useful for everybody who wants to build an authentic business, but particularly introverts. So tell us about what you mean by the importance of reframing how you think about marketing. Mm, that is a beautiful question, especially for introverts. I think that's where I got hung up in my business a lot in my, I, I want to say earlier years, which includes even a few months ago, um, is that marketing can feel very shouty and in your face and that's exactly a way that an introvert does not relate to it and that's often the way that we see it happening in the world out there and that can be very very off-putting so when I see something happening like that I go inside I don't want to be like that so how am I going to market how am I going to get my business out there that's not going to give me that sleazy shouting in my face pushy controlling feeling and so I made many mistakes. Well, let's call them mistakes, but they may be just that's where it went. Um, I, in 2014, I did a tele summit, and no, but I did all that hard work, and nobody knew about it because I didn't know how to market, how to put it out there without giving off that feeling that I'm so trying to avoid. Um, and so I've done a lot of hard work in my life, but nobody knows about it. So it's it's that's where the importance came in for me about being able to reframe it and see it in a different light so that I can do it with a feeling of authenticity and ease and flow. And I think my biggest value, one of them is probably to make a difference in the world. And if I can see it in that way, like here I am, it's like I'm, I have some water for thirsty people. And if I offer it to a crowd, some people in the crowd will be thirsty and they will be very grateful for that water, but not everybody will want the water at that time. Now, if I can offer my services or what I do and what I love doing in that way, it just feels so much better to me than, yes, my water, you got to have my water. <laughs> so that's definitely something I learned in, in our work together. Yeah, I love that. That's a great analogy because when you have an offering that is the right match for the audience, you just need to whisper, you know, just say, Hey, I know you're thirsty. I've got some water here. And especially because you've been around the crowd, <laughs> you've been around your audience. They trust you that your water is, you know, filtered and it's <laughs> good to drink. Right. Versus just some random person that is selling bottled water. Or you know what I mean? Using that analogy, yes. it's, you know, when you build a relationship with your audience, there's trust, and if the offering is aligned, you can just whisper. And so I love, I love the, the idea of um, marketing not having to be about shouting because that's typically how we've all experienced it. Um, loud, brash, salesy, um, you know, big red font, um, you know, 
excited, you know, car salesman type of type of thing. So thank you for for helping us to see that marketing is about connection, right? Because and that's what introverts are are really great at. So mm-hmm. say more about that. I mean, the the strength of introverts in building relationships uh, compared to maybe extroverts. So maybe yeah, touch mm-hmm. on that a little bit. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, many introverts don't necessarily find it very easy to reach out to somebody they don't know. But once they know a person, it is so easy and natural for them to continue to build the relationship and deepen the relationship. So there also maybe we can reframe it a little bit in, in, in just seeing the other person as there is a person who, um, who I can connect with. It's a real human being with their own problems, their own challenges, their own things that they need solutions for. And I may or may not be that person, but if we can just make it about the connection and real heart connection and just this, this is a human being with struggles just like me. Um, and introverts find it really easy, I think, to work on the connection level where it's not about you have to use the thing that I have that I can offer you, but we're, we're human beings with the same struggles, the same problems. We all want to be happy. We want to be loved, appreciated for who we are. And I think introverts are just fantastic with that. So they may do it one person at a time, which just feels so much more easy, authentic, um, and natural for an introvert. Yeah, I love that one person at a time. And I'll, I'll kind of apply that lesson to content you know well in the notes of the video i'll link to your facebook page where you are creating content consistently which is fantastic um when we create content instead of feeling like we have to please everybody it's like if we apply this lesson of let me write for that one person it's like i ah i'm just writing for liesel today Ah, i'm just writing for george today you know, then interestingly, I think it seems to me when I've done that, it connects actually ironically to more people. But even if it doesn't connect to more people, it connects deeply to that one person we had in mind or people just like them, right? So, mm-hmm. so talk about that. How do you, as an introvert, you know, and how, how do you relate to content creation, this thing about you know, I think that's one of the things that scares introverts, right? It's like, oh, George says we have to put stuff out there, you know, write stuff. Yeah, people might not like it or record ourselves. My gosh, you know. So, yeah, that maybe give some, some insight mm. and encouragement to other introverts. Yeah, that's exactly a fabulous point, George. One of the things I come across often is people saying, I can't put myself out there. That's in fact, the words are here all the time. And in fact, it is what stopped me for a long time. It's like I was scared that whatever I put out there is not going to be liked by everyone. And that's exactly what we don't want. I I really don't want the whole world to come to me. I can't handle it. (laughs) So, um, For introverts or many of introverts that I've come across, it is much easier for them to put themselves out there with written content. So a video or audio or something like that is not easy for them to start with. Start with what's easy for you. That's what I teach as well as use your strengths. The things that are already easy and great for you, start there and it can build. Um, And then the point that you made about when I write also, I think of the people that I really love and enjoy working with already. And when I think of them, it's so much easier to write as if I'm just having a conversation with them. And I think that's the thing is also when we sit on the receiving end of content, who of us wants to feel talked at? Nobody enjoys that. So if we can feel like we're just having a conversation, so writing in a conversational way, writing in a way that you would talk to a friend or that you would talk to somebody that you just love working with. Um, and that content journey has been very valuable for me as well as I've been learning from you is to do it more regularly and consistently. I think that was one of my big lessons is the consistency has helped me so much. Also just refining what it is that I really talk about. It's not just, you know, it's as I'm going on this journey, I'm finding that I'm talking about 
things slightly differently, but it keeps coming back to the same sort of topics. And so it's helped me to refine what is it that I'm really saying? What is my most important points? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So one of the um, maybe thoughts that keep people from being consistent in their content and maybe more true for introverts too, is this idea that I'm only going to write when I am feeling inspired to write. Um, so I'm going to wait for the inspiration and the motivation, and then I will put something out there. Uh, well, I, what are your thoughts about that? Mm. <laughs> um, I have many thoughts about that. And one of them is because I wrote a book, um, it was never going to be possible to finish that book if I only wrote when I felt inspired. I had to put my seat on the bum every day for whatever number of hours it was that I had available in that day and write whether I felt like it or not. And often um, after I put my bum on the seat and I put my hands on the keyboard, inspiration came. It wasn't there before I sat on the chair. So I think there's a combination of having discipline and just saying, I'm going to do it whether I feel like it or not. And, and perhaps having a few thoughts or ideas on, okay, what I want to write about today is X, Y, Z. It may or may not come out like that. It often doesn't, but at least we've got some thoughts before we start. Yeah. I have the same exact experience. I mean, in fact, just before this call, you know, just before, you know, I was doing my content time and, you know, as you well know, I have this sort of structured time, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays to, to do my content. And almost every time I start, I don't really, I can't see how it's going to turn out. Like I, I'm like, I, I all, I mean, you know, I would say two out of three times, I'm, I'm still fearful. I'm mm -hmm. still like, I can't see how this is going to turn into anything good at all. I don't, right. I don't see how I can write more than five words. You know? wow. I mean, I have those ideas, but I, I don't know how that's going to just be more than just, here's the idea, you know, which right. I can say in one paragraph. Um, but when I start, and, and like you said, you know, bum on the seat, and, and sometimes I actually stand, you know, when I write, but, but either way, you know, sometimes I sit, sometimes I stand, but the key is to start typing, start typing or start writing. However people want to do it, just to start, just to start writing about the idea, like whatever, whatever's coming to you. And yeah. And, and again, you know, it's like a miracle every time <laughs> Like for me, like, I'm like, how, how is that? How did I just produce that? I, I really don't know, but I got started yes. and, and I just, I just refused to stop writing. Uh, yes, there's occasional pauses, but then I keep coming back. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of perseverating too long. Uh, let me just keep writing. And whatever ideas, whatever, just let me work it out in the writing. And it just gets refined. And it's like, wow, look at this piece. I, you know, it, it really is. And, and your pieces are amazing because people like your writing. And, uh, and I'm so glad to hear that you have that same experience. Absolutely. And I love what you said, everything. And one point I want to add that may also be helpful for people because of my background with the strengths finder is for some people, it's far easier to express themselves verbally because they have a talent called communication, which is about verbal expression. So when they start talking, the ideas come. So all they need to do is almost have a space where they can be on a video and open their mouth and start talking and ideas will come out. For other people, it's much easier to put their hand on the keyboard or pen on a paper and ideas will flow. So whatever your strength is, start there and you'll build maybe other skills along the way, but start with what's easy for you to start building the confidence that you can do this content creation. Thank I love that. So let's talk a little about strengths and we're going to start wrapping up the, this interview in the next few minutes, but I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I'd love for you to touch on the, the importance of strengths. I know such, such a short time, but just give us a sense. You've given us one example of, you know, verbal versus written processing. Um, and I'll just say, you know, that's how I really started. I was stuck in writing. I couldn't do it, but it was easier for me to talk it out. 
And so that's why I started doing the video. But those of you who are shy on video, you could just talk it out in, you know, in a voice memo app or something like that on your phone. But um, so, so to give us a few more examples of strengths, maybe you could share yours or if you could share strengths from clients you've seen. Right. Oh, thank you. Sure. That opens up a long <laughs> conversation, but I'll, be, I'll keep it brief. Yeah, just a little um, So, yeah. So some of my strengths are um, learner, for instance. So learner is a person who loves learning new things and who will never stop learning. It's a, it's like a absolute need they have to le keep learning new things like in their area of passion. Um, and they want to not only learn about it, but make it into a practical skill. Mm. And, and actually, before you go any further, can, to give us a little bit of background about the Gallup Strengths Finder for those who haven't heard of it. I mean, I've heard of it. I know it's the most credible, you know, uh, strengths test. Uh, but but say more. I mean, you know more of what the how many people were researched on this and yeah. Uh, right. Absolutely. The background. So, uh, at the at this time, around about eighteen million people have taken the Strengths Finder. Wow. Um, worldwide. So that that is a massive number of people. Wow. Um, I think they started doing the research. It's it's run about uh, thirty years of <clears throat> excuse wow. me research that's gone into it already. So um, it's it's a really credible body of work by the Gallup University, mm. um, and they found that well they they've narrowed it down to thirty four strengths in total that everybody has, but in a different order, and. So your top 10 to 12, if you do the assessment, the top 10 to 12 ones are your energizing strengths that really come out of you like easily. And the bottom five to eight are your draining strengths. And it is really incredibly vastly important for us to know which ones energize us, which ones drain us, so that we can build our career and our life in the areas that we strong in and not try and use the energizing strength, uh, the draining ones for our daily work and and where we need to function mostly because it is it can literally drain us to a point of getting diseases or terminal illnesses or so because our body is not designed to work in that area um, and then you can design your career that way you can design your marketing that way you can make sure that whatever you do you do in a way that's going to be easiest and most enjoyable and inspiring for you that is awesome. I, I, I haven't heard it described it in that way, and I, I'm so grateful you did. So do you work with – how do you work with people to help them discover and, and use their strengths? I love your cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of biting my, my earpiece and everything. <laughs> oh, oh, just being an okay. adorable cat. Um, yeah, so I work one-on-one -on -one with people on a, on a strengths journey. Some people just want to start with a top five, which is a possibility, and then we do two or three sessions to really dive deeply into that. And other people want to know their full 34 so that we can discover what the draining strengths are as well. And so it's a journey of about six sessions to really go deeply and discover it in their life and apply it directly to how is it going to work best for them. Um, and where are pitfalls and we can, we can, they make more of what they have. Um, so it's a really an individualized journey and profoundly confidence building and relieving also because many people let go of shoulds that they had all their life and guilt. Wow. wow. Yeah. So the way you start obviously is that the client will take the, the whole strengths finder test. Yes. Um, and if somebody already took it, they can still work with you to uh, get your customized insights into their, how they apply their strengths and what they are. And, okay. That's Absolutely. really wonderful. Um, let's talk for like a minute or two about tapping and EFT. I know a lot of people watching this have heard of it. It's becoming actually kind of mainstream. You know, I'm seeing it on mm -hmm. the evening news, you know, like the, the, the anchors are they're showing the tapping. <laughs> like that. Um, so, how do you, yeah, well, I mean, you've worked with it for, for years. So uh, what, what would you like to say about that? Mm, thanks, George. Tapping has been such a tool for me, even in my own life, to keep clearing the obstacles, the, the things that are in our way, like, oh, I can't do this thing. I'm too nervous about it. Or I have a fear to show up on a video or um, I'm petrified to put myself out there. All those kind of things that are stopping us the emotional things that are stopping us from taking action. We may have the skill, 
but we're just too terrified to do that thing or procrastination. So um, there are just so many things that people let come in the way of, the, of showing their brilliance and of showing up in the world and shining their light. And it's that kind of thing that EFT is just so magnificent with. So I help people to overcome those blocks with the use of EFT. So we do some deep work during our sessions. And then I also send them home with how to use the tool for their own everyday use so that they can use it even when we're not together. Yeah. And you also do a, a group um, tapping, I guess, guidance or, or experience. So talk, talk to us about that. You have that monthly tapping circle. Why is it important or helpful to do that in the group? Yeah, that's awesome. So once a month, every second Monday, we have a group and I limit it to six people. So it's introvert friendly as well. And the group work is awesome because so many people end up having the same experience. They, or they can relate to each other. And it feels like really like a little community um, people feel connected, like, oh my goodness, I'm not the only one with this. I don't feel so lonely with my problem. And because it's group work, when one person clears out something out of their own life, it affects everybody along the way because we're all connected on an energy level and on so many other ways. So it's very powerful work, even though it's in a group. And what are some of the issues or challenges people bring to the group? I've started to give it themes. So the next theme is procrastination. So we're going to work on procrastination issues. Previous one was getting, putting yourself out there. The one before that was fear of public speaking. Um, and so there's various issues like that, that just stop people in their tracks of taking action that they, yeah. that they want that's, to be able to. That's great. Yeah. Procrastination. I'm sure lots of people can <laughs> benefit from, from going, from doing that. So, um, Thank you, Lisa. I will be sure to put the links uh, for people to follow up with you if they want to join your you know, email list or follow you on Facebook to find out about the next Tapping Circle. And of course, it's such a small availability that people should sign up if they're interested. Um, it's very affordable as well. So thank you, Lisa. It's great to having you here. Thank you so much, George. It was wonderful speaking with you. Thanks.